reporter Michael Downer is joining us live with more. Michael. Val, the accuser Beverly Young Nelson says she has not talked to the other accusers. She voted for Trump and is willing to go under oath with her testimony today. She says this is not about politics, but has everything to do with the man who she says assaulted her. Beverly Nelson today, next to her attorney, Gloria Allred, laid out a timeline of Moore's alleged sexual assault. When I was 15 years old, I began working after school. The location, Old Hickory House, a restaurant where she says Roy Moore was a regular. He sat at the counter in the same seat night after night. Nelson says the then DA flirted with her and in once in her yearbook signed Love Roy Moore. It was a few weeks later after work on a cold night that Nelson accepted a ride from Moore when her boyfriend was late. I thought he would get on the highway, but instead he drove to the back of the restaurant. She says it was there that Moore assaulted her. Mr. Moore reached over and began groping me and putting his hands on my breast. I tried to open my car door to leave, but he reached over and he locked it so I could not get out. I tried fighting him off while yelling at him to stop. But instead of stopping, he began squeezing my neck, attempting to force my head onto his crotch. After fighting, Nelson says Moore eventually gave up. And he then looked at me and he told me, he said, you're just a child. And he said, I am the district attorney of Etowah County. And if you tell anyone about this, no one will ever believe you. Nelson says she was afraid of Roy Moore. And while she did tell her family members, she says she may have kept her story quiet if it wasn't for the four women who told their story to the Washington Post last week. At the end of her news conference, well, she had one last comment for Roy Moore. That he no longer has any power over me and I no longer live in fear of him. Now, we did see Roy Moore respond to these allegations just a few minutes ago, which you were able to watch live here on WSFA.com and on WSFA, of course, as well. And this is what he had to say. I can tell you without hesitation, this is absolutely false. I never did what she said I did. I don't even know the woman. I don't know anything about her. I don't even know where the restaurant is or was. And if you look at this situation, you'll see that because I'm 11 points ahead or 10 or 11 points ahead, this race being just 28 days off, that this is a political maneuver and has nothing to do with reality. It's all about politics. Now that's been pretty consistent with what we've heard from Roy Moore from the beginning of these allegations that broke last Thursday, basically denying pretty much any wrongdoing or sexual misconduct and saying that this is part of a political witch hunt against him because he's leading in this race. Val. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I'm proud to be with you. All over the state, Governor Ivey spoke to the people. Good morning. Thank y'all for being here. On interviews about the dangers and the latest on now Tropical Storm Irma. You want very much for all of our people to have current accurate information so they can help themselves. But before those camera lights ever go on, Ivy is working with a team on calls with the latest from the emergency management agency asking questions. But how do we activate that, that data? And taking notes so that before she sits in front of any camera, that she has the latest information. So it's an opportunity and it's a challenge. Ivy says on days like today, a major part of her job is to inform the public, but it's really those who are providing the information and any potential response to disaster who really are the key. And to see those capable, qualified, passionate people doing their job and doing it so thoroughly, it gives you a lot of confidence. The confidence to make sure she's able to do these interviews so that people all over the state know what's going on. Part of the team effort that tries to make sure that the people and the state stay as safe as they can. Raycom political reporter Michael Downa continues our live coverage from the state capitol and Michael today ends Bentley's time in office.
That's right, Val. A process that started more than a year ago finished in a rush today. A day that started with impeachment hearings and finishing and finished with the governor pleading guilt. And in the end of the day, Governor Bentley was governor no more. He entered with applause. And for the last time, as Alabama's governor, Robert Bentley spoke. I've not always made the right choices. I've no, not always said the right things. Those wrong choices sapped the trust from both Bentley and his administration. You know, the people can't trust the, the governor. The legislature can't trust the governor. There becomes a, 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 an almost air of corruption. In the end, ethics charges and the threat of impeachment led to this one moment. I have decided it is time for me to step down as Alabama's governor. A governor resigned to his fate, which for many has been something that's been in the cards for quite some time. You know, we filed these articles of impeachment over a year ago, and, and here we are. In the end, after ethics charges, impeachment motions, and calls for his resignation, Bentley stepped aside, but not before talking to the people just one more time. So thank you and goodbye. And I love this state from the bottom of my heart and the people who live here. God bless you. A goodbye which was unexpected when he was elected by a wide majority just a few years ago, marking the end of a day that is historical but a sad day for Alabama. Val.